Hello and welcome to Roadmap 2015. I'm Gwinga Ashiru. We begin today by taking a close shot on how the political parties are adjusting to the shift of the general elections. In some quarters, there have been anxieties that the election postponement may take a massive toll on the campaign momentum and the financial muscle of the parties. Against the backdrop of the election postponement, there have also been speculations that some powerful cabals are contemplating an interim government to midwife the transition. But the Attorney General of the Federation, Mohamed Adoki, has discarded the speculation, saying there is no provision for such interim government in the Nigerian constitution. Also, the National Chairman of the PDP, Adamu Muhazu, in a rather dramatic twist of fate, gives INEC a vote of confidence, which was quite contrary to what the director of campaign organization of the Jonathan Group said just recently. Take a listen to this. Indeed, we have noted the reactions that trail this postponement, particularly the very subjective statement from the opposition leaders alleging that our great party and the government masterminded the postponement to favor PDP. Rather than joining issues with the opposition in some of these needless and unsubstantiated utterances, we want to use this press conference to urge for a neat and positive campaign devoid of lies, negative propaganda, and incendiary statements. The truth is that the postponement has in no way whatsoever conferred any particular advantage to our party. Indeed, it is otherwise, and, our, and any of our candidates. Instead, it came with its own attendant loss of time and resources and delayed our celebrations for electoral victory, God's willing. One major factor to be considered as many Nigerians express anxiety of a possible outbreak of violence is the role of the youth towards a credible poll. It will be recalled that the post-2011 violence in Nigeria was reported to have claimed the life of 10 core members. What are the plans on ground for the mass induction of the Timmy Nigerian youth against violence? We had a chat with the Minister of Youth Development, Bonnie Haruna, who happens to be a two-term former governor of Adama State, one of the trouble states in the Northeast. We began by asking him what plans has he in ensuring Nigerian youth shun violence at the forthcoming polls. We as a ministry, as I said, we are more of a coordinating uh, organ of the youth uh, sector of, of the government. Uh, so, of course, there are programs uh, that we run, uh, advocacy programs that uh, uh, we run with uh, uh, our development partners, especially towards uh, creating, uh, conscientizing the youth uh, to be conscious of uh, their responsibilities as citizens of this nation and as future leaders, and to make sure that the 2015 election is devoid of violence and other antisocial tendencies. Do you have your facts on the percentage of registered youth voters that have gotten access to their PVCs? No, we uh, can't claim to have facts, but we know that um, uh, the youth are, are very active uh, in this election process. Uh, it's an active group, and we expect that uh, the youth will um, uh, constitute uh, the uh, main um, section of the Nigerian population that will have access to the PVC. Uh, PVCs. Uh, this election is more about them. It's about the future of this nation. In the previous years, the youth are becoming more synonymous with electoral violence now. Since they seem to be at the center stage of electoral violence. So what plans do you have to have a mass induction of the Nigerian youth against violence? We have had so many programs in, in the ministry. Um, capacity building programs, educative programs, uh, even our citizenship and leadership training center is involved in that. Um, a, we've always been conscious of the fact that the youth uh, always 
are victims of violence as much as also the actors in violence. You know, and uh, it is with that kind of consciousness that we've come up with several programs. Uh, you know, as I've told you before, with our development partners, to bring to the fore the importance of them to play within the constitutive and regulative rules and be socially responsible. Because if in the process of this uh, uh, election you lose your life or you lose. Uh, uh, you, you, you are hurt to a point that you cannot be useful to yourself, then you would have lost everything. So we have been very conscious of that, and we have engaged our youth in so many um, uh, programs uh, coordinated by the ministry. When we talk of the Nigerian youth, unemployment stares us at the face. And what are your plans to actively engage the Nigerian youth? Avenues have been created uh, jobs have been created through this kind of process. If you go to uh, uh, even the power sector, uh, there's an uh, entrepreneurship program uh, for which Nigerian youths have uh, are benefiting. About 7,400 uh, youths have benefited from a recent program that was launched by the Minister of Power uh, in the power sector. The idea is to create um, a skill label uh, the power sector and so many others and this approach has tended to be responsible for the about 1.4 million jobs that we are uh, this government is, is, is has always talked about you know through other programs like you win or what have you but i must always say and i keep on saying that the job uh, the responsibility of getting our youth employed is not just that of the federal government Every level of government has a responsibility. There have been several calls for the postponement of this forthcoming 2015 election from different quarters. What's your take? Well, as I've said, I am not um, a staff of ANEC. I don't work with ANEC. I'm not in a position to know if ANEC is uh, uh, prepared for the elections or not. But if there are verifiable facts to the effect that ANEC would not be in a position to conduct a credible election because there are certain challenges that it needs to overcome. Uh, there's no, there's no um, um, problem in uh, postponing it so that ANE gets uh, its acts together. Would you say this is in the best interest of Nigerians? What is in our interest is getting it done well. It's not uh, postponing it or not postponing it. That is not the issue. We have reports that over 20 million registered voters have not gotten their PVCs. But what analysts are saying is that even if this election has shifted, INEC lacks the structure to distribute 20 million PVCs within the stipulated time frame. That is the point. It's, uh, 20 million voters, um, uh, if they are not uh, allowed to vote because they have not had access to their PVCs, has the capacity of affecting the credibility of the election. 20 million voters can change uh, the outcome of the election in whatever form. So uh, this is the point. If it is true, as I've said, if there are verifiable facts to suggest that uh, there's a need to postpone this election. Now you talked about the time frame stipulated by the Electoral Act. What if INEX still does not get it right before the time frame, the stipulated time frame of the Electoral Act. If it is about distribution, we need also to do our own uh, bidding as citizens. If, for goodness sake, you offered yourself to be registered, what is the big deal in you taking some time, some few minutes to go and check for your PVC? You know? So I, I think we as citizens also have our own responsibility to do. Would you support the use of TVCs or other forms of voting? Well, in extreme situations, uh, if, if, if it, it is not going to uh, compromise the process, uh, the electoral process, and compromise the credibility of, uh, of the election, uh, why not? If, if it is allowed by the law and uh, um, ANE can, can, can manage it, why, why, why not? Let's come to the peace accord signed by presidential candidates of 
the political parties, that they are bound to accept the outcome of the forthcoming 2015 elections. Do you see this as a credible peace plan? Of course, it's credible to the extent that our president was involved, the uh, presidential uh, candidate of uh, other parties uh, uh, were involved. Uh, I have no reason to uh, uh, doubt the credibility of the process of the uh, peace uh, agreement uh, that was signed. I have no reason. But what some people are saying is that the peace accord is not in line with the reality on, of what's on ground like the insurgency and what the militants are saying, and also the PVC, of course. The, the, the reality in the North is, is not a reflection of the entire Nigerian, uh, Nigerian state. Of course, it's a section of the country. And um, uh, the fact that we have security challenges in the North is, does not suggest that other parts of the country, substantial parts of the country, uh, are not at peace. But even in the North is, the military is, is steadily uh, stabilizing the, the, the area, the, the, the situation. What would you make of the militants' rhetoric saying that if they don't get a favorable outcome of the forthcoming 2015 polls, that there will be an outbreak of war? I don't want to uh, go into that. I, I strongly believe, as I've said, that the authors of the Peter Co uh, Peace Accord are credible Nigerians, including our president. Mr. Bonnie Aruno, before we wind down this conversation, what would be your advice for the Nigerian youth? My advice to the Nigerian youth is first, they should stay out of problem, trouble, uh, by not making themselves available as uh, uh, agents of destruction, agents of confusion, agents of uh, uh, thuggery, you know, in uh, the electoral process. Uh, secondly, they should look at this election as uh, their future. You know, uh, uh, if we don't get it right, it also means that it also means that uh, it, it is going to affect what the government uh, 